and fancy seeing you here and welcome to Madrid, the heart of Spain. It's a city filled with amazing architecture, beautiful art, and most importantly for you and me, amazing food. So in this video, we're gonna show you everything we ate and loved right here in Madrid from breakfast churros, classic tapas, and hearty Spanish stews. Obviously, we couldn't cover every single food spot, but we still hope you find this list useful. So are you ready, Kuya? Yeah, I'm ready. I, we're gonna keep on voting, but let's go. There's only one way to start your morning in Madrid, and that is with a plate of golden churros and porras paired with thick Spanish hot chocolate. And no place is more iconic than the oldest churreria in the city, Chocolateria San Ginés. They've been serving the city since 1894 and have expanded to multiple stores occupying the same block. They do a bunch of dishes such as sandwiches and your standard coffees, but obviously we were here for the churros. Dipping them in the thick Spanish hot chocolate was just the perfect start to the day. Throughout Madrid, you'll also see these much thicker versions of churros called porras. Whereas the churros are light and crispy, the porras have a nice fluffiness to them if you're into that. But the best thing is that you don't need to pick favorites because you could just have both at the same time. This is a really touristy spot, so it can get insanely busy, but we weren't gonna miss out on dining at a piece of Madrid churro history. If you're looking for a less touristy and slightly cheaper churreria, then head to Chocolat. It's still in the historic old town in a quieter spot in town. We actually liked the food here a bit better than San Ginés. We got a big basket of churros and porras, which looked stunning. Their churros are in these cute little bowls and are super light and crisp, while their porras are almost like golden long bows from how long they are. Their chocolate here is amazingly thick, dark, and not too sweet, and I will never get tired of dipping these fried sticks in them. They also do savories here, so we got a little ham and cheese sandwich to mix it up a bit. And if you're all about that sweet and salty combo, don't be afraid to dip your savories in the chocolate because you know what they say. It's technically not a dessert, so I'm technically just putting on a sauce. Before we move on from churros, we had to slot in another spot just for good measure. We hit up Churreria Chocolateria 1902 in our very last night in Madrid just to try it. It's another long-standing churro spot and I always appreciate it when you can see the churro cooking action in front of you. We just got some churros and chocolate here and admittedly the churros weren't as nice and the chocolate wasn't as chocolatey as the other two spots we went to, but I guess nitpicking aside, we still enjoyed it and it scratched our churro craving itch regardless. If you're looking for more sweets and pastries, then El Riojano may know just a thing or two about Spanish sweet treats. This institution was founded way back in 1855 by a baker who worked for the royal family and the shop has kept much of its original vintage decor. They do an overwhelming amount of savories and sweets here that we just had to visit twice, but do make sure to pair your treats with their signature hot chocolate. Not too sweet, super luscious, and perfect to dip with some lady fingers too. In our first visit, we got a beautifully glazed palmera, a light and flaky lazo, and their iconic Spanish style French toast or torrija, which is infused with cinnamon, citrus, and gooey custard in the middle. When we dined in, we also got a few savory treats such as the bacon and date tart which was super addicting and a simple ham and cheese one as well. And the treats didn't stop there because we also got their pastry cream filled bun called a bamba crema, this highly addicting bartolillo which is a fried pocket of oozy custard, and our personal favorite, the crunis, an infinitely layered pastry that was a messy delight to eat with its crumbly pastry and light cream. Now we know why El Riojano has been open for such a long time. Bocadillos de Calamares are such an iconic Madrid staple that you'll find them everywhere in Madrid even though it's actually landlocked. And out of all the bocadillo spots, Bar La Campana just outside Plaza Mayor is by far the most famous, which means you may have to wait in line like we did. It's a hectic and exciting spot with orders rapidly going back and forth, and it's a cramped space as exemplified by our table for four struggling to keep all the food we ordered. Oh, do we even have space for <laughs> We got a few bocadillos, which obviously included the calamari one, and it was amazing. The squid was plump and the batter had a light crisp. 
I could eat this all day. We also got a pancetta sandwich, which had this fried pork strip going on. The broga e morcia or blood sausage sandwich, which was really interesting. And to mix things up, I also got a slice of Spanish tortilla, which was all right. Eiji also washed it down with a small glass of beer because it seemed like every table had a beer too. I also love that they give free olives every time you order, so make sure to grab a massive stash of alioli sauce to sauce everything up because alioli makes everything better. Gambas al ajillo is one of my favorite Spanish dishes ever and one gambas institution we had to check out was La Casa del Abuelo. It's another Madrid Centenario that opened in 1906 and have since expanded to multiple locations in the same block. Once the gambas al ajillo arrived sizzling in its fragrant oils, my mouth was salivating. It had a good hit of garlic, but I couldn't help but notice that although the larger prawns were so plump, the smaller ones felt a little mushy. We also got some gambas a la plancha or grilled prawns, which were fine, but couldn't shake off the fact that it was quite expensive for prawns that weren't even that big. Funnily enough, the dish we enjoyed here the most was their gorgeous cuttlefish and onion dish. This was so tasty and the onions were perfectly caramelized. As per usual, the meal came with complimentary olives and the bro even washed the food down with some refreshing tinto de verano. You've heard cliche sayings that there's simplicity and elegance and that less is more, but it was at Casa Tony where cliche is just reality. This is a tapas icon in the city and they specialize in simple food cooked over the grill which made for our favorite meal in our visit to Madrid. But if there's one dish to get here, it is their to die for orejas or pig's ears. I just enjoy the textural contrast between the bouncy meat and the crunchy soft cartilage so much. It's simply seasoned with parsley, garlic, and some sauce that makes for a killer bite. They're also famous for their deep fried zarrajos or braided lamb into sin that's such a unique bite to have that's both crisp on the outside but tender on the inside. It kind of looks like a gut knot now that I think of it. The gut knot! We also got dishes such as these beautifully charred mushrooms, juicy secreto iberico that packed a porky and green peppery punch, classic and garlicky gambas al ajillo, and these gorgeous cuttlefish with a dash of addicting alioli sauce. Wash down these tapas with a refreshing glass of sangria, then you've got yourself a quintessential Madrid tapas experience. If you watch our vlogs, you'd know we like to slide in a couple of Spongebob references whenever we can, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna pass up on the opportunity to feast on Gary and all of his friends at Casa Amadeo Los Carajoles. As its name suggests, this place is famous for their snail stew, but almost just as renowned as Amadeo, the nonagenarian who still works a counter to this day, although there is no guarantee that you'll run into him such as when we visited. Luckily, it isn't just snails that they excel at because every dish we got was a banger, from the simple and vibrant grilled bell peppers, the fresh tomato salad, and the crispy fried prawns as well. Don't skip on their torresnos either, which are addicting bites of fried pork they could snack on like popcorn, as well as one of our favorite dishes, callos a la madrileña, a satisfyingly tomatoey tripe stew dotted with chorizo and blood sausage. But of course, we were here for the snails and they were so fun to eat. You yank them out of their shells with toothpicks and once you're done, use their shells as little chalices to scoop up that holy, holy broth. It's such a unique experience that you'll definitely be wishing that time would go at snail's pace because you'll never want your time here to end. The competition for the best patatas bravas in Madrid runs as fiery hot as the sauce that douses this iconic tapa, but there are few like Docamar next to the Quintana metro station that have garnered so much praise from madrileños. This is a neighborhood institution away from the central city, yet this two-story restaurant manages to be packed on a regular basis with locals. Their bravas are simple yet well executed, although admittedly we weren't blown away by them. However, the potatoes were well cooked, they were mildly crispy, but it was the sauce that was incredibly addicting. Honestly, good thing every table comes with a bottle of their bravas sauce because I was pouring that on everything. 
We supplemented the bravas with some incredibly hangover friendly huevos rotos, which is sinful potatoes, eggs, and jamon mixed together. Crispy croquettes that came in various flavors, a comforting cannelloni, and to top it off, two massive pans of arroz negro and fidewa. The arroz negro with its intense brininess and squid pieces throughout went perfectly with some alioli to temper the salty bite, and their impressive fidewa made with short noodles was full of chunky and fall apart pieces of stewed oxtail or Rabo de Toro. This is a great place if you want to explore something outside of the city center and it's such a fun and lively joint to eat at. Apart from patatas bravas, the Spanish tortilla is equally ubiquitous throughout tapas bars in Madrid. And although I go weak for any tortilla, the one from Juana la Loca is on another level. This modern tapas bar serves everything from spruced up Spanish classics to dishes with Asian and South American influences. And I know just like Team Jacob and Team Edward alliances can run deep, tortilla alliances can be quite divisive when it comes to adding onions or not in the tortilla. Sadly for all the team I hate onions people, Juana La Loca goes all in adding caramelized homfi onions into the mix to make a golden sweet yet gooey tortilla that I would die for. But of course their wider menu is equally to die for. We feasted on this unique squid sausage fideuan noodles, sinfully tender sweet and sour secret ibirico pork with peppers, saucy shredded oxtail tornadoes with comfy potatoes, a modern take on the classic rabo de toro, this unique beef filet dish with melty Havarti cheese, bread and fried egg, and of course their sinful dulce de leche volcano dessert. And yes, watching that dulce de leche flow like lava is so hypnotizing, but don't forget to grab a slice of tortilla to go because you're not going to regret it. I love bacalao so much. Every time we had it in our travels, I've become somewhat of a cod correspondent. The cod, the cod, the cod, the cod, it's cod correspondent. So when we weren't sure what to eat one day in Madrid, I knew where we had to go and it was to Casa Revuelta. And to absolutely no one's surprise, they specialize in fried bacalao. They've been serving fried bacalao since 1966 and not gonna lie, I was kind of feeling sick this day and one bite into this juicy, flaky, salty and crispy fish, I felt like I was instantly healed. It's such a beautiful golden bar of seafood. We also treated ourselves to this delicious meatball dish with potatoes and an almond sauce that coated the meatballs perfectly in a luscious savoriness. But you must get their padron peppers too. It's literally just fried till they're blistered and lightly salted, but trust me, you won't stop snacking on these. And we also couldn't resist a Spanish tortilla which never fails to satisfy with its gooey center. We took advantage of the sunny weather too, so if you can, grab an outdoor seat in the street, park up with a vermouth and some bacalao, and you're set for another banging tapas stop. If you're suffering from insomnia, then boy have I got the cure for you, because I've never wanted to get some shut-eye so badly after this food coma inducing cocido madrileño at Malacatil. This is a more than 100 year old Madrid OG dating way back to 1895 that's decked out with a plethora of bullfighting decor and it's also one of the best spots to experience cocido madrileño. It's a traditional chickpea stew that comes with a literal old McDonald's farm assortment of meats such as cured ham, chorizo, blood sausage, pork knuckle, chicken and beef. You also can't forget the noodle soup, cabbages, potatoes, chickpeas, onions and slabs of pork fat. It's overwhelming, but just know that there's no right way to eat cocido, so you can mix and match as you please. In some ways, I felt like I was improvising a guitar solo, and if I thought I played a wrong note, I just tell myself, that's just jazz, baby. You like jazz? And if you're thinking, that's not a massive cocido, then I have to let you know the cocido we got was actually a serving for two people. But that's because also we wanted to try their other dishes. We got jamon, because you know you have to get this addicting cured meat. And we also got a light and simple confit filet of bacalao, some salad, because we thought we were delusional enough to think this will cancel out the cocido. And of course, we made room for dessert, so we got their light and creamy cheesecake and an amazing fried milk treat. Although you usually have cocido for lunch, we're glad we had this for dinner because it was straight to the bed for us after this meal. 
This is a cheeky bonus spot for you, and yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Jollibee isn't Spanish food, what is it doing in this video? And yes, you may be right, but also as a Filipino, I will make any excuse to eat at Jollibee wherever we are in the world. So, as a PSA for our fellow Kababayan visiting Spain, hey look, there's a Jollibee in Puerto del Sol, and it's huge, and beautiful, and it's got a palm tree in it. And of course, you cannot miss out on the crispy-licious, juicy-licious, delicious-licious chicken joy. It's one of the best fast food fried chickens out there and goes perfectly with rice and gravy. Other classics you can get are the burger steak with mushroom, gravy, and rice, simple but effective yum burgers that come in single and double patties with cheese, Peach mango pie, of course, because you know, McDonald's apple pie can suck it. And you already know, Filipino style spaghetti, you have to get it. A nostalgic combo of sweet tomato sauce with chopped up hot dogs and cheese, sure to make an Italian spit profanities into oblivion, but hey, haters gonna hate. Kiss Kifo! And yes, we ended up eating here twice, because we just had to. Before you depart Madrid, make sure to stop by Vicente for the perfect take-home souvenir. They're one of the oldest manufacturers of Tron or Spanish nougat for some sweet treats to take home. They do literally a million flavors here in different shapes and forms, but don't worry because they give out heaps of free samples. We took home a few flavors of our own and even a good dose of hot chocolate, just like the ones you get at the Churreria. So get yourself a few or Mr. Albert Adria will be very disappointed. Of course, we couldn't end this list without the legendary, the iconic Sabrina Botin. This is the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world with a history stretching all the way back to 1725. Their food is an excellent mix of all-time Spanish classics, but I'm sure most of you have come for the cochinillo, or suckling pig cooked in their signature wood-fired oven that has been continuously burning for more than 300 years. Such a simple dish of succulent pork with crispy skin served in its own juices and it's so fun to eat. We even got some roast lamb for some wood-fired oven action which was great and heaps of other dishes such as their dark and luscious callos with tripe, their bacalao in a tomatoey sauce which was of course cod correspondent approved, a heartwarming garlic soup with a cute little quail egg and delicious artichokes tossed with pieces of hamon. Dessert was divine too because their flan hit the spot and their impossibly gooey cheesecake was one of the best we've ever had. Eating at Butin is like eating at a live museum. It's a beautiful space where you can almost hear the history speak through its walls and it should be on any food lover's bucket list. So yeah, get your stomachs ready for Madrid because Spain's energetic capital is full of incredible eats that you're going to be wanting to fill your stomachs time and time again as many times as we saw this panda mascot time and time again. It's like it was following us, I swear. And if you want to see more of these places on our food and travel adventures in Madrid, then be sure to watch the full vlogs over on our YouTube channel. So that does it for this video. Madrid is an amazing city to explore, but especially to eat. Obviously, we couldn't cover every single food spot here, but do let us know down in the comments below what are your favorite places to eat here in the city. So anyways, we hope you enjoy the city just as much as we did. So safe travels, happy eating, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.